Hi everyone, welcome back to another Simple Planes video. In this video, I'll show you how to make a custom engine Simple Planes and all the code that goes with it. So, let's get started. Now the reason we're here and not in the designer with a put together engine about to talk about how it's made is this is the third time I'm recording this video. Both previous times I forgot to set my recording software to record my main monitor and so it recorded my left monitor. Anyway, so we're here now and first I'm going to talk about the code that goes into this engine fan. Quick thing about this engine fan, pretty simple to make, this is actually a custom one. You make one of these fan blades, and then you just rotate the base of the engine, like not the engine, but the ba base, like the, rotate the nose of the, the cone of the fan, and then you keep moving the fan blade until you have a full fan. Now, for the code that makes it work. Now, first of all, this code makes the engine fan blade behave realistically, like would in a real engine. So, first of all, as I activate the engine and the fan blade increases in speed. You'll note it increases pretty quickly, and then when this engine core here starts exhausting thrust, then we can actually interact with the front, interact, but we can then control the fan using throttle, reverse thrust, which is co which is actually controlled by fire guns, and fire guns increases the fan's th blade speed to I'm just going to say 40 units rate to so the so the rate of the change and so the way this family works quickly is we have a rotator that's using the sound function which I'll explain very soon to then rotate this fan blade and it's effectively like an infinite spin rotator because of how the sound function works so the fi fire guns in or reverse thrust increases it to 40 units throttle increases it to 50 units fire guns overwrites that and then goes back to 40 units and then when I Turn off the engine, fire guns and throttle can't do anything. As you can see, I'm actually spamming both of them. This does not change. Well, it is changing, but it's not affected by the first thrust or the throttle. And note that it's taking a long time to, I'm just going to say, spool down. And, and this is caused by how the smooth function and my different smooth functions. So, first of all, what are all these functions? Well, the sum function. And I'm not sure I really how to describe any of these, but the sum function allows you to. I think it's described as the sum of a value's overall inputs over time. I think I have no idea that's the actual de definition, but so I have this code here: sum throttle, pretty simple. And as I increase throttle, the sum increases, and then it doesn't decrease. It just—it's more like I add. I guess you could say like I add it to it. I'm not really sure how to describe that. And I guess I think this increases by 2 units every second if it follows out 100%. Not really sure. And that works. That's the sum function. That pretty much sum all of this mess is how this fan blade works. The rate function, I don't actually use that in this fan blade, but you can, I use that as a way to, to explain the function. So, the ch this, so the, ra the rate function is the, the rate of change of, 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 of the value within it, which in this case is sum throttle, which is the same as sum throttle by itself up here. So with currently, I think it's, I'm not really sure how it gets the number, but like the, the number is definitely related to something, but I'm not sure what. So one something. So as I change throttle, you can see this number changes. And also, if this says 0 0.42, which we can convert that to 42%, that's what the throttle was here. So, this is now at, I'm just going to say, 92%. This will be 92%. So, that's the rate function. Currently, so rate all of this mess here is currently zero because the fan blade is obviously not turned on. The smooth function. The smooth function is a way to control how fast a value can change. So, take the value engine one on. That is the vote of how the whole engine works. And engine one on in the variable settings, because these are all variables, not all of them, but engine one on 
and everything and all these other words here are variables defined in the variable status. So engine one on is currently clamp 01 activate one. So really that is return zero one because activate one is a boolean true or false, not zero one. Or minus one or one. So engine one on is zero zero. Engine one on is either zero or one. I'm gonna activate one. Oh activate activate one. If you, no. Engine one on will be one. Note the behavior of this smooth function, which is currently set to one. You can see that it takes a lot not a long time, but it takes some time to change. And then note here, smooth engine one on two, and then smooth engine one on zero point five. The lower the value, the slower the, the value changes, and the higher the value, the faster the value changes. So engines one smooth one is so. Let me just explain quickly how that is used in the engine. So engine one on is so s take the code sum and then just just that engine one on. Like the throttle, it will just continue to change, and, t and you can. I guess you could use the code. Like this is this is all codes for how to get an engine fan turning realistically. I guess you could use the code sum throttle to have a, a pretty realistic engine with its own custom fan blade, which is, oh, which is to begin with better than the stock engine. And to get a step ahead of using sum throttle, what we could then use is have it where the fan blade's idling when the engine throttle is actually zero. And what, the way we do that is we would have the code sum and then smooth engine one on comma some number and then plus some throttle and then of course th that has its own limitations where th th you could you could always use throttle even if the engine is technically turned off so I have some code in here somewhere that that deactivates it. it's a little complicated but I have some code that deactivates the ability to use throttle or fire guns or the reverse thrust and the engine is turned off okay so smooth clamper one engine went on that's the activator, so smooth all of this. Engine one on times clamp engine one on so engine smooth one. I am not making sense at all. So really this code here is the idling code. So to have a, a twenty t so the reason I have twenty times this idling code is just to make it spin a little faster in the sum. So but the the core code is smooth all of this stuff. And it's the second from the bottom line here. Currently it's one because everything else is one and the engine is idling. But if note the behavior when I turn it off, smooth all this slowly decreases. And also note the code engine one smooth one, which is currently 0.015. This is the rate of change for the smooth, which is a low number. If I fast forward you can see that it takes a while to slow down. I'm just gonna skip ahead a bit. And then note when I activate it, the engine one smooth one changes. And therefore, you can see the engine quickly ramps up. This is intended behavior, and in real life, the engine would quickly spin up because that's when you're providing all the compressed air to it, your fuel, you want to get this engine running. And then when you turn the engine off, you don't really care about how fast it spins. So then it slowly decreases in speed because there's no vol power going to it. And then the engine fan would just slowly spin, free spin, and then it would stop until it starts by air resistance and friction. Now, my b the way I've found to mimic this behavior is to have in the variable setters two different lines that are both called engine one smooth one. One is set to 0 0.1 and the other is set to 0 0.015. And in the activators of these variables, the one that has engine one smooth one be 0 0.1 is activated when engine one on equals one, which is a boolean. So really when engine one is on, then have this bit, which is 0 0.1, be the smooth, the value, something. And then when the engine is off, have engine one smooth one, be 0 0.015, which is a lower value. And that's, as that therefore the smooth is, takes a longer time to turn off, so we'll get to zero, causing the behavior of the engine taking a longer time to spool down than it does to spool up. And that's just the idling behavior, which is absent from the stock engines and an entry level custom engine. And the code to have the reverse thrust bit be in the be in here. I'm just gonna try and find that. I think that's actually part of engine one throttle. 
because I don't see it's it's there's is even more valuables behind this bit too. And I hope I haven't missed anything, but I think that's it for this engine fan. And then uh, an engine one smooth two is just like engine one smooth one, except it's for the throttle, not the idling behavior. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the variables for this. So these are all th this is all for the one engine. And uh, so engine one reverse thrust here. I think that's reference ah here we go, that's reference an engine one throttle. And it just fire gun so the engine one on, so of course that doesn't work unless the engine is on. And this is the code for engine one throttle. And it's been a while since even I looked at this engine, so I'm gonna try and figure out how this engine worked too. First of all, let's get the code for the throttle here. Clamper one, so I'm just gonna try and well, I'm just gonna try and figure out what this is. Ah, I, I, never mind, I know what it is. So the first bit is sort of simulating the idling behavior. And if the rate of this, which is this number here, if this number is greater than pretty much almost I almost ready to idle, then that activates control of auto and fire guns. And then we have the actual code that runs that. So we have some code that allows when fire guns are not on, or really when I say fire guns, I mean reverse thrust. So when reverse thrust is not being used, then allow throttle to be used. Or when, it's, when it's on, then that deactivates the use of throttle and reverse thrust takes priority. And you can see here that it is 0 0.7 when fire guns is in use and 1 when throttle is in use. And note that this jumps to whatever number I tell it, so it instantly goes to 0 0.7. However, that's easily handled by the smooth up here. So that all of this code is just is engine 1 throttle. That's this code down here. I'm not really sure why I didn't have engine one throttles be in the code itself. I think that's for simplicity and so I could easily figure out how to deal with all this code when all this build the engine. But I'm just gonna leave it as I found it so I don't break anything. I think I've reasonably explained how the engine works. So now I'm gonna put this thing back together and I'll show you how to build one. Well, I'm not really gonna show you how to actually build one. I'm just gonna show you how this is put together and I think I'll just show you how as I'm putting this one back together. So first of all, this is the engine core. It's just this, this mod core, and you can you can just make your own using fuselage parts, or you can have the mod. Then, and then with the engine fan controlled by the mess of code that I spent half the video talking about, and then for the engine cowling, that is just some hollow fuselage parts using the new fuselage slicing feature to slice them back here, because that's how reverse thrust works. Like the the details of reverse thrust, not the functional bit, but the but just the looks of it. And also, the reason I have two different sets, one is grey for the inside of the engine, and one is white for the outside, thus to just simulate more realism and how the engine looks in real life. This is not based on any, on any engine in real life, it's a fictional engine. It's meant to be called the SWL X series, another fiction, so it's fictional, completely fictional, but it's just a little engine, many, many details. So the base of the detail part of it is the engine cowling, with, which is hollow, which allows me to put an interior in here. And then I put some. I'm trying to save some parts here by, let's say, having fuselage slicing to have two of these being one part. And these are called chevrons back here. I'm not sure. I think they're used to dissipate air turbulence or something. They're there in most modern engines, so on they go. And then for the engine pylon, you can see how the grey bit. And this is using fuselage slicing again. The grey part from the inside of the engine pylon, like for inside the engine, neatly meets the white part from the outside of the engine. And I've sort of followed, if I were to continue the back of the engine, where that would be. And also, this is all for looks and, well, really for looks actually, there's no sound from this core. All the sound and probably thrust comes from this batch of engines here. And and if it, you find it a little difficult, you could just have one of those engines, and there's also their own code that goes with them. And I think this is one of this is the manager. So this is the code here, and this code is and that's the, and that's what the engine throttle is used for to avoid redundant code in different parts of this engine. So I can reference it in many other parts. So I knew I knew it would break something. It's this engine. And then in an engine, the engine pylon attached to the engine core. So I made the engine pylon go inside, and it looks like this, and there's no engine core in there. With the engine core, it looks a little like this. And of course, inside the engine core is where all the 
not really part of the fictional engine stuff is. Like you wouldn't find a scaled down other engine inside a, mo a normal engine, so that, I, I just stuffed all the like the, the mechanical bits, not mechanical, but just a little bit of stuff inside the engine core. It's not part of the details. And then we have, again, I'm not sure what to call this, the front of the engine, I guess. Ah, uh, the I think it's called the inlet. I hope I hope it is. This took a long time, and you want what you want to do when you're making this. Number one rule is to use the smoothing feature for textures to avoid looking awful. I'm just gonna turn that off and show you. So see this, how it's it doesn't look nice. Turn smoothing on, and there you go. Very nice engine, and the reason it looks a little glitchy, not glitchy, but just c cutting here, that's because this section back here is not attached to the front section. That's the part of the cowling that slides back when reverse thrust is activated. And of course, I can't have that attached to the front of the engine. And then there's the fan blade, and the rotators in this red bit, which is quite red. Uh, again, not part of the details of it, so they're hidden. This is also meant to be a turbo fan engine, where you have the engine core, then you have this large bypass fan that ha pretty much just generates extra thrust. And then all this here is more details. You have a line of rivets that goes around the front of the engine, and then you have some more details and text. In this case, it's the hazard area text, so on an engine you have hazard areas, which, and, the engine, and this is when the engine is running. And the front, you of course have the inlet area where the engine is in taking air, and, and of course you don't want to get sucked in, so you want to stand clear of that. And actually I think this red line here is to indicate where the front of the engine is. And then of course you have out the back, this triangle, where the exhaust is, and you don't want to get blasted out of the way by a bunch of hot air moving, quick, moving very quickly. And other than that, there's not many other details, aside from all the reverse thrust interior bits. Which I'm just going to show you now. When I activate reverse thrust, you can see that cowling slides back. And the reverse thrust in real life will be guided out here by these fans to push out this way. And the way I get reverse thrust in simple planes, because of course simple planes physics are being weird, like they always are. I have another hidden engine, like a small stock engine scaled down, that is that has a thrust scale that is greater than that of the forward engine which generates the thrust and then that reverse thrust engine overrides the thrust of the front engine so the engine appears to be generating reverse thrust and I think we're done that's all that's all the parts of the engine I can think of and I'll upload this engine to simulplanes.com so you can have a look through it yourself get some ideas from it and I probably missed something but I think that's it so that's gonna be it for this video I hope you enjoyed you, should, you hopefully know how to make a custom engine now Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!